Hey guys, so today I'm creating a new video series. It's called Learn With Me, and we'll be focusing on Ruby on Rails and React Framework. This is a little bit different outtake on my series. I'm very new to Ruby on Rails. I've probably not written any code yet, except for little things here and there. So what this video series will do is give you a beginner's outlook on how it is to learn Ruby on Rails. Um, I'll be trying to create this series throughout the week. Yeah, if, you, if you're, I guess a disclaimer is, if you're looking for a, an expert on Ruby, this is probably not the video series for you. Uh, you should go look for another video series on YouTube where it's an expert overview. But if you're looking for a beginner, um, you know, sometimes people say that you learn best from a beginner because you can really see their process or their, you know, what they have trouble with. So this will give you a nice overview of that. I am not new to React. I, I'm, I'm very familiar with the React front-end framework. One thing that I don't have to learn in this video series, but Ruby will be very new for me. So this diagram just kind of shows you what we're trying to build. Uh, what the Ruby on Rails framework will come with some commands that we can generate our application, which we'll do just in a bit. Uh, and the Ruby part of it will be just the REST APIs. And then we'll create a JavaScript folder inside of our Ruby app to create our front end code. Uh, the front end code will just end up in one index HTML, which is just a single page application. And inside of this single page application, we'll call our Ruby APIs. So it's a very simple architecture. We're not going to look at anything outside of this diagram because you know if you look at a application that needs to be in production, you need a lot more things, different parts of the system, but we'll just be focusing on the API, the front end, that's all. Let's move to our terminal and then we'll start creating our application. So here you can see in my terminal, we can already see a Ruby version. So this is iTerm and it shows me what version that we're running. So currently it's 3.0 and we can confirm that with Ruby-V and also Rails-V. Um, so these are the versions that I'm running right now if you want to compare with your versions. So the first thing we need to do is maybe just look at the help text for the Ruby command line. So we have one command called Rails new. Uh, and it look, looks like there's a lot of different options that we can provide. Uh, we'll just start with Rails new and I believe it's the application name. We'll call this uh, book reviews and dash D will be for database. Yep, so D dash D is database and we'll be using Postgres. So, so PostgreSQL and then dash T and we're gonna be using React. So this is one, one command that we do have to use called Webpack. And then there's another thing called skip coffee to not have coffee script. That's not something we need right now in this application anyway. Uh, and that should be all. So it's going to create a bunch of new files for us. Now let's get our VS code up while that happens. All right, so there's probably some extensions to install. Let's start directory here. Look, we have a new folder called book review. So we'll go inside of that folder. And now what we need to do is actually set up the database. Uh, Ruby will have a migration system for you. So first thing we need to do is probably create the database. So we have the Rails command line again. Um, there will be some new commands for us. So here you can see db drop, db create. So we'll be using this command right here. So it'll be Rails db create. So it says it created book reviews development and book reviews test. Now to confirm that, what we can do is go into our any kind of database management app. And then here we can see two new uh, databases here. So let's just open the development database and see what's in there. No tables. That sounds good because we haven't really created any models or data or tables yet. Uh, and let's just see if the server runs. So we'll do Rails, I believe, S for server. So it says it's listening. Let's open our browser here and go to localhost 3000. Yep, looks like Rails is up and running and we can kill that just for a test. But this here is not React.js. So what we need to do is actually set up our React folder so that we can start using that. And that will be in our app and JavaScript folder. So this is all our JavaScript here. Now it says JSX, we wanna use TypeScript for this application. So that's what we'll set up here. And also 
load the JavaScript app instead of this Rails MVC framework. So the first thing we need to do is basically create a controller to serve our index file. So the index file is where our React app will live. And that, that will be the only index, I mean, HTML file that we will have in our application. So we can use the Rails command line again for creating a new controller. So this will be the controller name and this will be the path that we want. And it creates a bunch of new files for us. So let's see what those files look like. We have a SAS file for CSS. We have a home controller with the index route. We have some kind of helper module, and then we have the actual home HTML ERB file, which is their uh, MVC framework file. And we have a routes file. So from all of these, now what we actually want to do is update our root routes. So that'll be in config. Uh, and we have our routes RB file. So this is something that's already created for us. But uh, we, we have a get request here, which in all of our Ruby application, we just have one get request right now. But what we do want to do is make sure that the root root of our application, so just the slash, not the home, uh, we want just the slash to be home and then the index route. And we're going to delete this get request because we, we don't really need that. And then if we open the home.html, the ERB file, we have this kind of controller. Now, what we want to confirm here is that when we run the Rails server, when we run the Rails server, we have the new home page being served instead of this, this one here. Looks like it's compiling. And yep, so if we compare, compare this, find me uh, in, it looks exactly the same. And that's what, we, that's what we're looking for. So now that we've added, uh, updated our index file, uh, what we do actually want is to use the JavaScript files, right? So we do want to create or use our JSX files, which are in this JavaScript folder. So we'll open this JSX file and let's just rename it so that it doesn't look like hello react. We'll just call it uh, index.jsx. And then in the app JS, we we have some certain rails certain rails packages that i don't we don't really need to look at right now let's just focus on the index file so this is just some uh hello world type of code here uh one thing we do want to do is we want to find our root index file that that is being used by ruby so if we notice in our um, in our index HTML that we just created with the command line, we don't have things like the head tag body, you know, there's no, no tags other than just the content. So this is what goes inside of the body, but we don't have the opening HTML tag. We don't have the opening uh, body tag, head tag. So we need to find that. So that'll be in another HTML file, which are called, you know, layouts. So this will be a layout that Ruby uses. And that should be in our views, layouts, and application. So here we can see all of our HTML head body tag. So yield is where our actual uh, home, you know, other content goes. And this is our entire app. So since we created a new JavaScript file, so this is the index.jsx file, we want to add our JavaScript file into the application, that which will be our which is going to be our React application. So we have to do a little bit similar to what is being done here in the in line 10, which is pre-generated. I did not add this. So what we'll do is add another JavaScript pack tag. And this one will be called index because that's what we named our file here. Uh, so this is the pack tag and the, that's in the packs folder. That's where we get the index name here. So I believe that's all we have to do here. And we could also just add one more sort of boilerplate code here for a meta tag. So this will be our viewport. Um, now this just, I got from a different application uh, and it just sets our content width and uh, scale. So we don't get any funny sizes. So now that we've added this index uh, pack tag here, I don't believe we need any other JavaScript pack tag because we won't be using anything else. Style sheet we can keep in case we, we add some style sheets there. 
And the next thing we should do is probably remove this boilerplate H1 stuff because we don't really care about what came with Rails and that file can be empty. So we can focus on our React application and what we should do is create a new folder called components like we usually do in any other React application. And what we can do is create a new file called app.jsx. So what we can do in here is import React and we'll create an app constant uh, function component. So this will take props and return a div just for now. Hello from React. And we'll just export that default or have a default export for that. And in our index file, we will just re let's remove all this stuff here. We don't need any of it. Or we do need React DOM actually. And we'll import app from, from our components folder or that'll be one level up. And we'll just display the app here. That'll take no arguments. Okay, so let's go back to our HTML or to our browser and refresh. Okay, it looks like Ruby comes with a profiler that kind of gives you how much time it took. Uh, I have not seen that before. Interesting. We'll keep that. But everything seems to be normal and working because we can see it says hello from React, and that's what we have in our app.jsx file. So the next thing will be to convert this into TypeScript. Now to add TypeScript to our React and Rails app, we do need to run one more command called bundle exec rails. And this will also include Webpacker. So we'll install via Webpacker called TypeScript. Okay, so now let's go and change our index and app files to TypeScript. Uh, now, once we change it to TSX, it does complain that, uh, so we need to allow synthetic default imports here. So it looks like we need a TS config file uh, or update our TS config file. So let's, let's add that to true here and let's see if that goes away. Yep, there we go. Let's go ahead and change our app file as well. And let's run our Rails server and see what happens. Okay, let's go to our browser and everything still works fine. So we have our TypeScript code running with Rails. Okay, so that's all that I will do in this video. And in the next video, we'll start creating the database models, the APIs, and also some of the front end. Again, there will probably be different ways of doing what I'm doing. This is, you know, I'm very new to Rails and this may not be the best way of doing something, but I'm trying to follow the best practices that I can find online and create this application. So if you have any tips or, you know, different ways of doing what I'm trying to do here, which might be better, do leave a comment below. Maybe it helps, you know, I'll, I'll try to learn whatever that you have to say and maybe include it in the next video. That's all, thank you.